else here. This is AP Macro, uh, number one, obviously, and I believe this is set two from 2021. Uh, let's jump into it. Assume Smithland is, a sh is an sh in short run equal. Sorry, I had a stroke there. Give me a second. Assume Smithland is in short run equilibrium at a level of output that exceeds full employment. First of all, that's code. If output is greater than full employment, this obviously implies we have what we call an inflationary gap. So we have to know that. Obviously, if you don't know that, it's going to be hard to draw this, right? But we can see output is greater than full employment, right? So if we're drawing our graph here, long run aggregate supply, obviously on the vertical, short run, upward sloping, aggregate demand, downward sloping, price level on the vertical, real GDP on the horizontal. They're saying that output is greater. Oops. So let's just move it to what we want. So let's just put it right there. We can see that our price level is high. Output is high, right? This implies that we have what we call an in that short run, short run equilibrium right there is an inflationary gap. So we know we have an inflationary gap. Easy enough. Draw a correctly labeled graph of the aggregate demand, short run, and long run aggregate supply curve showing current equilibrium real output. Let's call that Y1. That's our current, where we are currently. This is PL1. And obviously, full employment is right under that long run aggregate supply curve. So that's full employment. Easy enough. Uh, assume Smithland's government cut taxes taxes go down, the way we think about this, if taxes go down, do people have more money to spend? Yes, they do. If they have more money to spend, we know consumption is going to go up. This is going to make aggregate demand go up, price level go up, real GDP go up, output goes up. Obviously, these two are the same thing, but there's enough questions asking specifically about output that we have to know it. And unemployment would obviously go down, right? Low unemployment because output is so high. So what they've done by cutting taxes is that expansionary, really what we're talking about here is an expansionary fiscal policy. And they've shifted aggregate demand even further to the right. So we know that's going to jack price level up even more and output. Uh, show the short run effects of the tax cut on equilibrium real output. Do they tell us? Yep. Why two? So we would just do Y2 right there. We can see outputs increased even more. C, based solely on the change in real output, what will happen to each of the following? The natural rate of unemployment. Recognize that is your natural rate of unemployment right there. Uh, our natural rate never changes. There's only been two FRQs ever uh, that I can put my hands on where they actually change the natural rate of unemployment. Uh, and that had to do with changing unemployment benefits, which this does not talk about. So we know that almost 99% of your questions about that natural rate is just going to be answered with no, no change, no effect. This one is a little tricky here. Uh, I had to think about this um, when I first saw it. Um, and I can't say that I, I, it came to mind right away. But the understanding here is we are talking about nominal interest rates. When I'm talking or when we're talking about nominal interest rates, we usually are talking about monetary policy because that's what affects. This is our money supply. This is our demand for money. This is nominal interest rates on the vertical and quantity of money on the horizontal. So this is what we call our money market graph. That's our money market graph. And they're saying that output has gone up, so nominal interest rates have gone up. Well, lots of people want to rush towards shifting the money supply curve, but there's only three things that shift money supply. One is either buying or selling bonds, right, by the Fed. Uh, they can make the discount rate go down or up, or they can make uh, the RRR required reserve ratio go down or up. These are the only things that would shift the money supply curve. And that is not happening. All we know is output is going up. And we know that demand for money 
think of it like this. If output goes up, we also know that when output goes up, this is going to drive up the price level, right? As aggregate demand is shifted to the right, it's driving up aggregate demand. When aggregate demand goes up, I know that price level is going up. When price level is going up, this makes your demand for money go up. This is also going to drive up your nominal interest rate. So what we have happening here is a demand for money shift due to those higher price levels. That doesn't tend to make a lot of sense to people, but if we had, let's talk about it for just a second. If I take you out to taco lunch every Wednesday, and taco lunch is 10 bucks, that's all I'm spending because I'm a cheap guy, and taco lunch is $10, well, what's my demand for money? If I'm paying for taco lunch, my demand for money has to be $10. But what if the next week I take you out to taco lunch and now it's 20 bucks? What just happened to the price level? Prices went up to, keep, to pay for your taco lunch. My demand for money just went up to $20. So when the prices of things go up, we need more money to pay for those more expensive things. And that's you, almost always when we're talking about a price level going up, we know that affects demand for money going up also. So we just have to know that. And we know that's going to drive up with that rightward shift of demand for money. That's going to drive up the interest rate, the nominal interest rate to be specific. So we would simply say all of that, say that demand for money increases. Uh, I would say not, I would start this by saying nominal interest rates go up. And then say as uh, aggregate demand goes up, the price level goes up, which makes demand for money go up, which makes nominal interest rates go up. Obviously, you wouldn't write it out in that shorthand. I just don't have a lot of space here. So make sure we understand that relationship there. It's important. And it is on a cheat sheet on my blog. So you should be able to find it there. All right. D, assume this central bank intervenes to correct an inflationary output gap. What open market operation should the central bank use? Well, obviously, we're in an inflationary scenario, and the Fed, which is the central bank, right? The Fed and the central bank, first of all, OMO, or open market operations, is always buying or selling bonds. You need to know that selling bonds is contractionary, and that selling of bonds would push aggregate demand back, trying to get it back to full employment. So that's what the Fed's trying to do. And we can write this out if we needed to, right? We know selling bonds makes the money supply go down. When the money supply goes down, shifts to the left. That's do, I have to, do we have to draw it? Oh, they do want us to draw it. Showing the effects of the open market operation on the nominal interest rate. So let's get rid of this. This was something different that we were just kind of throwing out there for our own understanding. And recognize that when they sell bonds, that money supply is going to decrease. That means it's going to shift to the left. As that money supply shifts to the left, we can see we have higher interest rates, right? We went from one to two. Less money in the banks drives up nominal interest rates. And this should make sense to you just from an intuitive sense. If the Fed is sucking money out of the economy, there's less money in the bank. So each dollar that banks are trying to loan out, the price of those dollars are going to go up. The less things tends to drive up the price, right? And the same way works with money. As there's less money in the banks, the price of money goes up, which is your nominal interest rates. As interest rates go up, that we know that's going to make investment go down. People don't want to take out loans when the interest rate is high. Investment going down is a determinant of aggregate demand. That goes down. That makes price level go down. That makes real GDP go down. Output go down, same thing. It's all cause and effect, right? Unemployment is going to go up. I just write it all because I have it in my brain. And if you have it in your brain, it's very hard for them to trick you. So we've shown our money supply shifting to the left here. We've shown our increase. We want to use arrows to show that increasing interest rate. They're not so worried about the quantity of money. Nobody asks about that. They always want to know about what happens to the interest rate. So make sure you show that and talk about it. Uh, t -t good. F, based solely on the interest rates changed in Part E, what will happen to the international value of the currency in the foreign exchange market? So this is foreign, ex foreign exchange stuff. If you haven't gotten to the foreign exchange, then that's not going to make a lot of sense. But what we see here is that our real interest, oh, our nominal interest rate, thank you, Charles, 
our nominal interest rate is going up. And you should have known by now that when nominal goes up, real goes up also. They're going in the same direction, right? So we know when nominal goes up, we can say the real interest rate goes up. And we know that if we have, let's say, U.S. and Japan, there's our big 4x in the sky. If the U.S. has the higher real interest rate, that implies Japan has a lower real interest rate. Well, which country would you want to put your money in? The one that's paying more in their banks, they have a higher interest rate that they're going to pay you for putting your money in? Or would you rather put your money in Japan that has a lower real interest rate? Obviously the U.S., right? And the Japanese feel the same way. They're going to take their yen, drop it into the Forex. They're going to buy dollars with those yen and obviously um, put them into U.S. banks. We can recognize that the value as the demand, let's draw it out here with a small graph. Forex is just supply and demand, right? So we know, and it is supply and demand of everything in the Forex. So as those dollars, right, as those dollars are being demanded by Japanese, because they want to, they have to exchange their yen for dollars. So the demand for dollars is increasing. As the demand for dollars increases, it drives the value of the dollar up. Um, and that's what we're talking about here. The value would appreciate. And the way we just explained this is Japanese want higher real interest rates. They want to make more profit on their money. And they need to do that. They need to exchange their yen inside the Forex, buy dollars, and put those dollars into U.S. banks to get that higher real interest rate. And I think that's a nice explanation. Um, that's obviously acceptable to the college board, the jerks. Based solely on the exchange rate change identified, will Smithland's imports increase, decrease, or remain the same? We should just know this off the top of our head. There's no reason at this point in the game not to recognize that when a currency appreciates, when the dollar appreciates, I know exports go down, which also imply that imports go up. Um, this is a clear sort of understanding of of doing a lot of work on the Forex before we get to know how we have to know all of this stuff. But if a currency is more valuable, that impl and we have to do, we have to explain it. If the currency is more valuable, it implies that foreigners have to spend more of their currency to buy our currency, which makes our goods and services more expensive. Right? So our goods and services are more expensive. That implies that others, they're not going to be buying our stuff, right? But we know that our currency is stronger, right? So that makes other foreigners' goods look more relatively cheaper. So our goods and services, our, that's the way we should say, our goods and services are more expensive. So our exports would go down. Uh, at the same time, our currency is more valuable. We could say it's stronger. We could say it's appreciated. Therefore, um, other foreign goods, other foreign goods, you know what to say. Other foreign goods uh, appear relatively cheaper, relatively cheaper, and therefore we're going to buy more of them, which means our imports are going to go up. Um, Practice saying that a couple times, right? Make sure we understand it. Uh, I do a whole section on uh, 4X, which clearly talks about uh, that appreciation or depreciation of currency and how it affects exports and imports. So we should just have that in our head and not have to think about it too hard. Because it's one of the things you know we're always going to be asked. All right, my friends, uh, be safe, take care, and um, I'll see you soon.